Hi, everyone. I'm David Marinak. I'm calling this little segment or segments. Um, I, I find uh, telling stories that um, uh, hopefully will help packaging resellers, hopefully help companies in. Uh, I've done this for a long time, 35 plus years, um, seen a lot of stuff, um, you know, from um, uh, good and bad. And I think it's 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 important to have a little uh, segment excuse me, called Lessons from the Road. Um, this is about my time selling the Hoover Vacuum Cleaner Company many, many years ago. Now, I've done another video um, called Storytime about Hoover and how I get in the door there. And that was a long, drawn-out process of getting past the um, the, the, the gatekeeper um, who sat behind the desk and then getting get, begging to see a buyer and back in the day that was a buyer mentality where the buyers critic controlled everything shipping um, uh, indirect products themselves costing invoicing getting paid um, they were the chief cooks and bottle washer and especially at the Hoover company um, it was often uh, humorous back in those days that the big um, the big uh, um, uh, guys at Hoover, um, to give an idea of, uh, um, you know, what, what goes on in some of these big companies, they've long since been purchased and gone. These guys are either, uh, long retired or dead, but there was a, um, um, the head of, of purchasing at that time, or one of the heads of purchasing, um, ironically once when I was a, a young guy, um, this isn't even the story I'm talking about, but I was a young guy and, um, I, he asked to see me and I was totally thrilled. I was like, holy crap, maybe I'm, you know, this is, I, I've just hit the lottery. And, um, um, he, he wanted to see me. And so I was like, geez, okay. So I, I hurry up and thinking that maybe he's got a project for me and, uh, maybe he's going to kind of, no, he wanted to hit me up for, um, ball game tickets, whether it was, um, yeah, or, or tickets for something, whether it was for, um, the Indians or for the Cavaliers or for some concert, whatever it was, he found me and, and hit me up for concert tickets or something like that. Now, at the time, I thought this was going to open up the can of worms. And I, I got the impression that um, this was going to lead to more projects. I got the impression that this is going to open the door and suddenly I'm going to be able to um, sell the Hoover company. And ironically, so I did what he wanted. I got him his great seats, paid for it myself, by the way. Um, I, I had no bank account or so no expense account. This was out of my pocket. Got him great seats. I, I literally hand delivered them. And you know what this guy was doing? He had his own side business where he was selling. He was hitting everybody up for tickets. And then he was selling them for cash. Um, he had his own little side hustle, his own side gig, free tickets that, that suppliers would give him. And then in turn, he had his own little network that knew to call him um, to, uh, to get great seats for events. They'd pay him cash and he'd walk away. That's how slimy um, that that was. Um, and, you know, as a young sales guy, you get burned on these kind of things. And and it's just it 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 costs a lot of money and it hurts. And my story here with this in particular, kind of around the same um, um, topic, if you will. But the thing I wanted to really emphasize is there's a lot of times when salespeople in this space get um, very, very comfortable. You know, say they've got an account and Hoover and I got very comfortable. I started doing, this is forget the, the ticket thing. After a while, I broke my way in and we were able to sell them and, and, um, and, and kind of build that up into something. But um, I remember back in the day, I um, thought I was very, very secure in that business. Now, because I was so enmeshed in um, problem solving packaging that all the things I propose to our reps, all the things I propose to anybody that um, that wants to learn about how to successfully sell packaging, pain points, finding problem areas, um, solving them, whatever. 
And I had a very, very tight relationship with several different buyers and several different people in throughout the engineering department. And I was thinking about starting my own business. I was thinking about, um, you know, kind of, you know, going out and, and starting uh, getting a registering a name with the state, doing this all legit. And I began to quietly ask these people who claim they were my friends um, that they were going to, oh, yeah, you can count on us. You're our number one guy. You're our man. We will, wherever you go, you're our guy. We, I don't care. You can, you, can, you can sell this stuff out of your garage. You can count on us. We're going to back you. We are going to support you. You've done so much to help us. You know, as a um, young guy in the space of trying to start my own business and going through the motions for this and hearing this from not just Hoover, but there were a couple other key customers that said the same thing, which tells me it's all BS anyhow. Um, but the lesson here I wanted to share is don't fall for that crap. Um, you know, be prepared that no one's going to follow you. And that's exactly what happened here. I, um, you know, I went down this road and when somebody's, the, the lesson here is uh, don't, don't be that foolish. I thought for sure that, um, you know, that could be a good little chunk of business to help me put the, um, the shingle out, so to speak, and start my own business. And I already talked with the suppliers. I already had that all laid out. They will supply me. But when it came time and I stepped out on my own, these people turned their back on me so fast, it wasn't even funny. I mean, that one side would, hey, yeah, and oh, gee, I can't take your call. Or, you know, suddenly an email isn't returned or you can't even get a response. Or the people that were, I mean, in these people, we had wined and dined and gotten to know personally and knew their family. They knew our family. We knew their their kids. They knew ours. Gone. I mean, gone. And these people ran. And the, 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 the moral here is when their job or their um, position or rank um, or power center is shaken a little bit, um, don't expect these people to, to support you. Uh, if they do, then you've, you're really, really fortunate. But I haven't found anybody um, you know, a couple of guys, smaller players there just pretty much told me on the QT that, um, you know, this is going to happen uh, after the fact. And those weren't the main decision makers. They just basically told me what was what had gone down. And it's it's so sad that a lot of times there's a lot of, and a lot of these buyers were either jealous or uh, envious or wanted to, to start their own company. And it gave them tremendous power to, um, to shaft somebody like me. And despite being at our wedding, despite going out to dinner with our families, um, that went right out the window. And the moral of the story is you can't count on these people. They will protect themselves and they will kick you to the curb as soon as they can. Um, this isn't meant to um, uh, begrudge Hoover. Um, that's a whole nother story. But or, or, you know, these people are going to look out for number one. And and that's OK, because I'm looking out for number one as well. But the lesson or the moral was if you actually think these people are going to back you and support you, you're crazy. It's not going to happen. If it does, that's a bonus. For the most part, um, they are going to protect their own interest at your expense. Um, if that means pretending they never even knew you, I had that happen. I had plenty of these people that hit me up for golf and and um, uh, you know restaurants and uh, dinners. And when it came time to you know evaluate or if somebody would you know what do you think of this guy? They, whatever the, whatever the flavor of the month or whatever the, uh, whatever needed to be said, good or bad, they said it to protect themselves. If that meant to turn on me and turn on what we did or turn on how, well, I didn't help that much. He's just a sales guy. 
heard a lot of that crap too. And again, just learn the lesson that these people are going to look out for number one, and it's not me, and it's not going to be you either. So when you are thinking about doing something like this, be very, very prepared that nothing is coming your way, nothing. And uh, if you're prepared for that, then you'll be prepared for the worst. And I'm not looking to begrudge anybody or, um, um, you know, for what they do or, or pretend like I'm a Debbie Downer. I'm not. If they come with you, great, awesome. You're, you're way ahead of the game. But I haven't seen or heard many in my space um, that actually, you know, had somebody that really came through for them. And if they do, then then you're one of the lucky ones, because I was just literally going like, I just met, we just talked about, no, nope, I don't know what you're talking about. No clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I can't talk right now. These people will turn on you quicker than, you know, and it's just learn the lesson. It's a moral of the story. I hope this makes sense. And again, I hope this is helpful. Hi, everyone. It's David Maranek. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you want to see more, here's another video that you can check out, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.